we will be building a resonant loop antenna for use with an existing crystal radio. In this, I assume you have an existing crystal radio, a large valued variable capacitor such as I made in the previous project, small value capacitor or gimmick as explained in previous video and ideally an extra detector diode 2k resistor and also possibly an extra headphone you will also need some wires for hooking things together to make this 4 foot by 4 foot loop antenna, I used PVC parts that I had on hand. I needed four 34 inch long lengths of PVC pipe. Uh, to understand why they're 34 inches, remember that that Greek guy told us how to work out how long this hippopotamus is. I needed some T's a cross piece, and a couple of extra bits to make feet so it wouldn't fall over. And I needed four times, four times, four, plus a, some more wire, about 74 feet of wire. Now that we have created the coil, we need to connect a capacitor across it to make it function as a tuned loop antenna. When the resonant frequency of this inductor capacitor combination matches the RF frequency of the radio station being received, this antenna is quite sensitive. To verify that it functions, we connect a diode what some people call a crystal, a resistor, and a crystal earphone across the antenna like this, and then we will tune to see how many stations we can receive. When operated like this, the selectivity of the system is very poor. I could count, maybe it was four, or maybe it was eight stations. They were all muddled together and I could hear people talking over top of each other. Now it is time to connect this antenna to my existing crystal radio. But before I do, there's something that I need to explain about the procedure in order for you to understand what I am doing. Consider a circuit like this where L1 and C1 represent the tuned antenna and L2 and C3 represent the crystal radio's tuned circuit. C4 is a small value capacitor that is linking the two together. If we set the value of C4 to be two tenths of a picofarad and then plot what we would see for amplitude versus frequency on L2, we will get a graph that looks like this. As you can see from this graph, the selectivity is very good. It only passes signals right around 1 megahertz. Unfortunately, the amplitude of the signal as seen on L2 will be small. So if this was a crystal radio, the signal would be very faint. If we increase the linking capacitor C4, we can get about the same selectivity, 
but a much stronger signal. One picofarad of linking capacitor does even better. The amplitude is further improved and the selectivity remains very good. When we further increase it to two picofarads, we notice that the peak does not get much taller, but the skirts on either side start to move upwards, indicating we are losing some of the selectivity of this crystal radio. At 5 picofarads of linking capacitor, we can see that the peak has started to flatten out. At 10 picofarads, we're starting to see a broad peak with a bit of a notch in it. At 20 picofarads, this notch becomes quite deep and the peak is quite wide, and this crystal radio will now be very poor on its selectivity. We can see that if this collection of components was a crystal radio, somewhere around 2 picofarads would be the ideal linking capacitor. Part of tuning the crystal radio for optimum performance will be to adjust this linking capacitor to the correct value that works the best with the real components. I will now explain the procedure for using this loop antenna on an existing crystal radio. Those of you with loose coupling coils on your crystal radio can try experimenting with it like this instead, but I will be capacitively coupling. For our first step, we need to borrow the crystal rectifier, resistor, and earphone from the existing crystal radio to tune the antenna. With C4 set to its maximum value, that is, the wires tw tightly twisted together, C2 set somewhere in the middle of its range, and the borrowed components, you can adjust C1 until you hear what sounds like it might be a radio station you would like to listen to. Once you hear something that sounds likely, you can move the rectifier, resistor, and earphone back over into the existing crystal radio, and then try to tune it using C2 to adjust to get the uh, station you want to listen to. If the selectivity isn't good enough to isolate the station you wish to listen to from the other stations, the procedure is to decrease the amount of C4 by untwisting the wires until you start to hear that the signal amplitude has fallen a little. Then you readjust C1 and C2 to try to get maximum signal. You may go around three or four times tr trying this. If this still will not remove some strong interfering station, you can try rotating the orientation of the antenna. Loop antennas are somewhat directional. The best method is to rotate the antenna to try to minimize the interfering station because there is somewhat of a sharp null in its sensitivity versus orientation curve. That is all I have for you today. I wish you happy experimenting. Now cue the outro music and the credits. <laughs>